Sometimes I filter myself with this, but I find it to be Yeah, my, don't my filter music. here. We want to hear it. <laughs> yes? Okay, then, then I'm on board. Welcome to Body Buddies, home of the Power Foods lifestyle. Take it one meal, one workout, one day at a time. And now, here's the founder of Body Buddies, Christy Joe. Hello, hello, Body Buddies. I'm Christy Joe, and delighted to bring you another Body Buddies podcast focusing on helping you think about yourself and your life and learn some strategic nutrition, fitness, and mindset. A good while ago, maybe three or four months, I was stumbling through some YouTube videos trying to learn more. I'm always looking for new perspectives, opinions, etc., on the psychology of the body and addiction, subconscious mind work, especially as I've been writing my new book, Self Mastery Secrets, which releases in 2017 and starting my new Power Your Life Today podcast and YouTube channel. If you haven't seen those yet, just head over to YouTube, type in Power Your Life Today. You'll see a bunch of my power sessions there, helping you think a little more critically, open your mind, expand your horizons, etc. But I stumbled across a TEDx talk called Healing Illness with the Subconscious Mind, and it was by a woman uh, who is named Dana Piker. I reached out to her, I found her website, I emailed her, I said, I just need to have you on my podcast. And it took a little bit, I had to wait a few weeks, <laughs> and through a few rescheduling, about uh, three months later, we finally were able to connect on the phone, and I am so grateful because she expanded so much information and perspective that I'm delighted to share with each of you today. So I'm going to introduce her and prepare your mind. I just want to tell you, you're going to, you may need to listen to it twice. Um, there should be some aha moments, perhaps get out a, a piece of paper and a pen and take some notes. This will be very thought provoking for you. So Dana has a very interesting story because she is a neuro linguistic programming and hypnotherapy coach. This is where her, her approach speaks directly to the unconscious mind, which allows for powerful, effective healing. It's a proactive method which gets to the root of the issue and thereby can have a profound impact on overcoming obstacles in a quick and safe way. She herself struggled in the past with chronic illness and trauma. She knows what it's like to struggle. She knows what it's like to navigate the murky waters of illness when it seems like there's no one there to help. She says, if I, if I had had a coach when I was ill, I wouldn't have had so much pressure to be my own advocate and doctor. I could have regained my life much quicker. Her practice is called By This Time because she was always an ambitious person that felt held back by her limitations. She always felt that by this time I would have accomplished this goal or by this time I would have felt healthy and so on. So it's the time, by this time. So. Without further ado, open your mind, prepare to learn and think deeply with Dana Piker. Well, welcome to the Body Buddies podcast, Dana. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. We are so excited to hear from you. I have to tell our listeners how I found you and I just feel so fortunate um, after finding just randomly your TEDx talk on YouTube mm -hmm. and watching it and watching it three times. <laughs> um, and then I reached out and we, you know, a few months have gone by, but we finally have been able to do it. So I just wanted to thank you for your time coming on here today. Our listeners are going to benefit a ton. So let's start out with you talking about your passion for helping people with trauma and disease. Where did that come from? Beautiful. Um, that kind of came from my own experience where um, I had my own necessity for healing about six years ago now where um, I was nearly dead on the side of the road in a car accident. And um, after that accident, my, my mental and emotional health, even despite my physical health, you know, was handicapped for a long time, but my mental and emotional health were the more brutal pieces of what happened to me after that accident that required um, some healing. And the essence of what happened to me was um, the approach of normal therapy was not enough for me to get back on my feet. And I, I um, after being with a therapist for about half a year and kind of just wanting to find someone that was a little bit ahead of myself, in, in my thought process, um, 
I came across a woman who survived cancer, and she told me of a, a trauma therapist that basically saved her life. And I was very fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity to work with this woman. And um, long story short, she specialized in hypnosis. And had I known that, I probably would have not have gone to her. Um, <laughs> yeah, let, I, just to be honest, I was a bit skeptical myself, and I didn't know that she was a bit of an alternative thinker and and um, and person like that. So I didn't know when I first went to her, but. She did tell me initially, she's like, I'm a bit different, I'm a bit alternative, is that okay? And I said, I'm desperate. And then when she mentioned hypnosis, I had a lot of resistance. It was um, not in the cards for me. But then eventually, um, after I started liking her and thinking she's very intelligent and I'm very, very much so connected with her, you know, I finally agreed. And even within the first session, literally within the first session, I left feeling like a big shift. And then mm-hmm. over the course of three months, um, my trauma was healed and not just about the accident because the accident was basically the catalyst. It was kind of, I call it the big T. It was the big trauma that basically made me vomit up all these other little things I never dealt with in my life. And um, yeah, over the course of three months, you know, every, really every aspect of trauma, depression and anxiety that um, came up in my life as a catalyst from this accident was healed and cleared. So after about three months, um, I was vibrant again, and it wasn't initially that I thought I'd work in this. Um, It was actually a big leap because I went from a very mainstream work. I used to work in broadcasting for a long time, Mm -hmm. and I went from very mainstream, kind of had a job and and that type of thing, um, to taking the big leap into the world of alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. And now I've been doing it for quite a while, and... um, there's not a bigger blessing I've found in my life to be able to work with people in the way that I was worked with and to allow for not only superficial healing of kind of putting the bandit on, but really transformative, deep level, kind of the root of why you feel the way you feel, that kind of work. And uh, every day is fascinating and fulfilling. And um, yeah, that's kind of how I got into, mm. it was, it was my own transformative story right that well and that well, and let me ask that. you yeah. let me ask you this because in yeah. your TEDx talk you you talked about you had chronic fatigue syndrome which eventually led to fibromyalgia do you mind kind of yeah. weaving that in and and you then wrapped it in or you brought it into talking about the subconscious mind and what you were learning so yeah. share with us what did you learn and and are these things things that all of us all of us human beings need to be aware of. Yes, I love that. I'm so on board with what you just said because a lot of people, even before I did that TEDx talk, I was um, a public speaker um, on a different subject, and then a lot of people started coming to my lecture because I'm, I'm also an author of a book for Holocaust studies. I did a lot of hmm. speaking on tolerance and, and kind of the way the mind works with people and interaction, and then people started coming to my lectures because they started seeing in my my bio that I'm a, a hypnotist and I work with this type of stuff. So it evolved into lectures about the mind and how the mind works and with everything, literally from the way you feel physically, how um, your emotions can come up physically in your body uh, and all the way to addictions and different things like that. So my story also, um, the twist in my story is that I was, ill since I was a kid, you know, like um, Mm -hmm. a little bit weak kind of disposition as a kid, but I I really started developing funky symptoms as an 18-year-old in college, and every single doctor I went to um, was like a blank slate. Like there there was nothing they could offer me. So other than getting on antidepressants and reducing my stress and I, you know, which is what doctors still will tell you to do today, you know, they they don't really give you a tool. Um, for how to relieve that stress. They don't, and, and it was confusing to me because I was so young. So the accident was the catalyst, again, for interesting epiphanies in my own life because when I was healing from my traumas, my therapist and I, we never worked specifically on the fact that I didn't feel well. I would tell her from mm-hmm. time to time, I'm in pain, I don't, I'm tired, and stuff like that, but we never did the healing work around the illness. 
And the interesting part is when my traumas were healing from different kind of things um, in my life, the pain in my body started dissipating. Um, the emotional work started clearing up. My nervous system um, was basically allowed to reset and kind of go quiet and just be like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm at peace now. And the, the other twist is it's not as if I've had such a traumatic life. You know, um, a lot of people think that I deal with trauma, meaning they have to have had some catastrophe. It's really mm-hmm. not like that at all. I mean, every single human being has had a life and um, has had things that have happened to them that have created different stories in the mind that are going to make you have to cope somehow. So whether that's with alcoholism, you know, you're kind of trying to numb the emotional stuff or eating, which is kind of trying to stuff down the emotional core of what's happening. Or what I found, because when I actually began working, I was always working with addiction from the get-go. But my Mm -hmm. story was kind of personal to me, the fact that I, I kind of had healing in my physical symptoms. But it wasn't until a couple opportunities with different clients that I started experimenting with. If I can help people resolve their emotional work and they can quit addiction, then maybe that same overload of stress, just like it was going with me, stress has to do something in the body. So I started experimenting with pain and an illness, and the way it's evolved over the years has been exponential. But that was kind of the origin of how it began was, again, with my own me being a guinea pig for this work, and then going out there and being bold about it and being like, you know what, if this works for this, why would it not work for that? And it does. Well, and it's got to be powerful to see some of those hypotheses come true and see those conclusions where it's like, wow, if this helping people handle that stress as you talk about and peel away the layers. I've seen that in some of your work. Um, yeah. That this can actually not just perhaps fix, well, I don't know. Is that the right word, verb to use? Maybe heal, resolve. What would be the verb we use to deal with yeah, there's a, addiction yeah. or coping? Yeah, it's, it's more resolution. It's more resolution. Okay. So that's the word we'll use. So tell us more yeah. about this peeling away the layers because that's a fascinating image, first of all, um, to think we're all kind of sitting under some layers. What are some of those typical layers you see people have, and how do they begin stripping those away to bring about that ultimate healing? So that's a beautiful question. Um, Every ailment has a different kind of chemistry of layers, why things are happening, why you're reacting in a certain way as opposed to someone else working in a different way. So my kind of theory is that Everyone has, I call them the weak point. So even Mm -hmm. in the body, so for example, if someone has gastritis, their weak point is in their middle section. So when you kind of have healing and clearing around the emotional overload of whatever that is, if it's depression, anxiety, anger, and sometimes people, they're not even consciously aware that they have this emotional stuff going on. Mm -hmm. When you clear it literally around that area that's a weak point, um, the body will reset and go back to where it knows how to, how to be, which is ultimate and optimal health. Um, so let's say someone's weak point is their stomach area. Someone else's weak point might be their heart, so they might have high blood pressure. Another person's weak point might be their throat, so they might have chronic, um, you know, things that go on with their thyroid or tonsils and stuff like that. So that's kind of how it goes with disease. But the peeling away the layers, when I work with people, I work with the emotional core. And then as that peels away, peels away, peels away, um, the symptoms can, as a default, also go away. Um, And if not, I work with the the symptoms and details themselves. And the beautiful part of all of this is the majority of times when I work with people, I don't work with people for years and years and years. I work with people really maximum about two months. Wow. And they see this upheaval of healing. Yeah. That's it's powerful that potent. to think. Yeah. Alternative medicine, as we're talking yeah. about, that you're helping people release these emotions that are, you're saying, actually the catalyst to outward behaviors and symptoms. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So is there a tool that people can start to apply today that would make them more aware or be in the know a little bit more? The 
tools in which I use, um, I use my favorite tool is regression therapy. Um, mm -hmm. And across the board, it, I find it's the most potent tool for mind, body, spirit healing because the subconscious mind is the connector of it all. So the fact that your blood flows, the fact that you're blinking without thinking about it, that's all your nature. That's all things that just happen in the billionth of a second without you having to process anything. So the body, your physiology, is literally controlled by your subconscious mind. And one of the only ways to work with it is you have to work in a hypnotic way. So there's different tools that a lot of um, people use where, you know, there's um, hypnosis itself, NLP, EMDR, EFT. Those are all hypnotic tools. Um, so regression therapy happens to be my favorite because it's literally getting into the core, core, beginning, 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 foundational belief, foundational emotional connection that you have to this ailment, releasing it, and that's why I work so quickly, you release it from the beginning, and therefore that pattern of survival that you've created really as a defense mechanism in your life is chopped off. So the new stress, the new stimulus that comes in, you actually cannot react the way you used to because that pattern has been effectively changed not only in your psychology, in your emotional chemistry, but also in your biology. So that's that. A tool that people can use on their own, um, a lot of people, for example, there's a lot of stuff I do with visualization. So, for example, if it's – and a big thing I, I know with um, weight issues, there's different emotional cores for different emotional weight issues, but – Oftentimes why diet doesn't work um, is because until you feel safe in the world, there's a reason your body created a protective shell. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to you that you kind of had this psychological turn on of like, okay, I was threatened somehow, whether it was with men or whatever the case, um, where if it is unsafe for you to feel attractive in your body, if that's what's kind of going on in your psychology, Every diet will be sabotaged because your subconscious mind would rather you not be thin and be safe, if that makes sense. It makes perfect so, sense. Yes. So that's an emotional well, I, layer that was... Sorry, I keep interrupting. I, yes. Well, I'm just so curious because I want to ask you this because, you know, oftentimes yes, when I work it. with my clients on their nutrition... Um, something will come up as we're kind of discovering why are we sabotaging? And, you know, I'm not a therapist. I'm just asking questions to see if they know the answer. And yeah. so many times I can't even tell you that rape comes up. Yeah. Something that they exactly. have never really told anybody. And it comes out and I'm like, wow. So, so yeah. you saying this, I'm seeing that connection too, is that these emotions buried within us, can cause yes. outward behavior that's different than what we like consciously want, but you're saying that yes. subconscious part of us controls it all. Yes, so that's exactly it. I can't tell you how many women have come to me for weight loss, but in reality what they're healing is their trauma of, it could be mm. sexual trauma, emotional trauma. It's a theme and it's a problem, but the beauty of that is once you feel safe in the fact that you're not being threatened anymore. Like you said, so consciously, every part of you consciously wants to follow this diet or go to the gym and be in health. Every part mm -hmm. of you consciously wants it. But your subconscious mind, which is the stronger part of your mind, because it is your nature, um, your subconscious mind more strongly wants you to be healthy and protected and safe. So that is a more important in your survival than the fact that you're going or want to go to the gym. So your subconscious mind, so the only thing with hypnosis, which is interesting, because it's not magic. A lot of people think, you know, it's magic or voodoo or, <laughs> you know, this type of thing, which, believe me, I get all the time. Um, <laughs> it's not magic. Really all it is is um, it's making your conscious desires easier because it allows your subconscious mind to come into agreement with your conscious mind mm -hmm. by making you feel safe and which is like one context of you know kind of how that works but yeah it's, it's really it's a it's um a profound connection and if you think of it that way you can kind of thank your subconscious mind in a weird way 
um, and say, you know, thank you. I understand what you're doing, and I appreciate the fact that you're trying to keep me safe. And okay, like now, let's uh, get over it and, <laughs> and be real here. Wow. Yeah. So give us a few ideas of different uh, symptoms or addictions that perhaps this could be exactly what's going on. What have you seen in your office and in your, your, your is that a clinic or what do we call that? <laughs> yeah. By the way, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll work well. Um, so it's very interesting because I find that the emotional core for each thing is a bit different. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of, and that's kind of why I work on the emotional stuff first, because someone, if someone comes into me for alcoholism, we could directly go, okay, the first time, the very first time you had emotions about alcoholism, which will provide benefit. But mm-hmm. the overall human experience, um, because the emotions are the motivators of behavior, um, when you clean them out, like the anxiety, the depression, the anger, when you clear those out, um, the symptom in and of itself, which is alcoholism, could fall away without you ever working on the alcoholism. So if not, and then we go to the more specific symptom or ailment at hand. So alcoholism, a lot of what I find is um, anger issues, just a feeling of uh, injustice, a feeling of uh, a bit of unfairness. And a lot of people say, you know, alcoholism is genetic, but my kind of feeling towards that is if, there's been, let's say, abuse or whatever is making you angry or just kind of things in your past that you're not um, happy about. And then you see it as a child. You see people drinking. That's kind of my interpretation of why people would choose alcoholism to cope with their anger. And I I do find that alcoholism is is more of a feeling of injustice. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Um, Weight, like we spoke about, often is a lot of times sexual trauma feeling threatened and unsafe. Um, Disease is very interesting. Chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, the more nervous system diseases, um, and I sometimes get a lot of uh, flack for this when I say this, and listen, I'm I'm on the same board, like I'm on the same page because I'm also used to be ill. Um, And actually Mm -hmm. it's interesting, um, I was uh, with an ex, my ex, for a long time, he would tell me, it's all in my head, it's all in my head. And I used to get very angry at him because I told him, I was like, if you felt what it felt like to be in my body, you wouldn't say it's all in your head. Hmm. So now I know that even if you feel it in your physical body, you still have the interpretation in your mind. So you still have to interpret that pain in your mind. So you do feel it in your body. You can't disregard that and you can't discredit that. But you're interpreting it in your mind. So I find that a lot of kind of nervous system issues are um, when you're sick as a kid, you get love. Hmm. So, for example, if you feel as if you're not getting attention as a kid and you have the flu and all of a sudden you're staying home from school and your mom is pampering you and that's the most attention you get from her, then... Your subconscious mind, again, only looking for healing, only looking for protection, and only really looking for love, it's kind of a twisted way to gain attention. Again, that's not to say at all, I want to put this out there because I do get flack sometimes, but it's not to say you're consciously ill to get attention. God forbid that's not the case. It's just some kind of um, a way of feeling comforted. So your body has kind of perverted it in a way that you feel ill in order to feel. So a way to heal mm-hmm. that is to allow the body and mind to feel comforted. So those are I love every part of this. Well, I'm just curious because this is kind of the way I grew up and the way that my family thought and Uh, A book I read when I was young called Fillings Buried Alive Never Die was the first way that I began to think about is there more connection than just people and their behavior. And what really stood out to me in your TEDx talk, besides the whole part, of course, but was you saying we are patterns and talking about that. So, So shift into that for me and tell me what does that mean, we are patterns, and what does that mean for our lives? Okay, yeah, completely. Great question. Um, In order to survive, we have to be patterned. So 
in order to wake up in the morning, brush your teeth, drive a car, whatever it is that we do instinctively, um, we need this infrastructure of thinking, which is our subconscious mind. We need it because if we had to think about everything we did, every single second of everything we achieved, literally as the miracle of being human, um, we would be dead because it would be overloaded. So the amount of processing that our natural mind does, our subconscious mind does, is mind-blowing. So there has to be learned behavior. There has to be kind of this um, structure of thinking or we wouldn't be able to live. So this structured thinking sometimes has a kink in the system. And again, neither good nor bad, but oftentimes that kink in the system creates some malady or addiction just because it's, a, it's been patterned into us. And it's like basically as if you have software that has uh, been coded a little bit funny. So in that same way in which we have software because the brain is so beautiful and so fluid, we can go in, we can work with the software, work with the coding in a kind of beautiful imaginative way, which for whatever reason works. For whatever reason, working with the imagination, the subconscious mind is very abstract. Um, you know, sometimes when I work with people, people tell me that it's like as if I'm, you know, painting a picture like this masterpiece in their mind or vice versa, they are painting this new fluid um, feeling. And, and again, the subconscious mind is the connection between consciousness, like what you see in your perspective, and super consciousness. So a lot of my new interest is, the the metaphysical realm of healing um, because I do believe all of healing is mind body spirit and the body is behaving in the way that the mind directs it so even if you do energy healing or acupuncture which I'm a big fan of um, if your mind is still going to direct the energy the exact same way because of your pattern you can do all the energy healing you want but until you get to the core until you shift that patterning um, the director of your destiny, of your life, will still communicate the same way. So again, your, your, your subconscious is the connection of your superconscious, which is your spirit, your destiny, your higher self. And the subconscious is basically the connecting point of who it is you're meant to be, kind of coming into your body in a full way, into your consciousness. So when you heal the subconscious, the reason we have trauma, the reason we have disease, is more for spiritual growth, if you kind of want to go there with me. Therefore, I actually do. <laughs> yes, I keep going. And, and go as deep into stuff. that as you would like. Please please do. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I filter myself with this, but I find it to be Yeah, my, don't my filter beauty. here. We want to hear it. <laughs> yes? Okay. Then, then I'm on board. Okay. <laughs> all of trauma and all of disease is, um, for better or for worse, it's still painful, but it's, it's our tool in human life for growth. Mm -hmm. And when you clear the subconscious mind, you're literally creating more hollow space, more space in the brain, more space in the body. When you heal, 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 and you're creating that, you're literally creating more space for your superconscious, your higher self, the, the part of you that is more godlike, to fill your body. And when you have that healing, the reason it's so transformative is because the whole reason you have the trauma and the disease to begin with is because, spiritually speaking, you're meant to overcome it to become more of an enlightened individual. So all that's happening there is by clearing the subconscious mind, you're allowing more and more of your superconscious, that part of you that is more the creator, godlike, um, manifester, if you want to call it. You're just allowing more room for that beautiful essence to kind of fill your body. And that's the whole goal of... Um, of why this stuff even occurs to begin with. So that's a little bit more of the esoteric explanation, but um, right. I'm becoming more it's and more outward beautiful. lately with, with that stuff. Right. Well, and I'm going to ask you even, let's go a little deeper with it. I'm curious. Um, so when it comes to, let's say, somebody who is, is born with a condition or disease, and, and yes. just your, your personal beliefs, I'm just very curious, do you believe – that they are born with it for a purpose or is it just natural world consequences or where does that come from and, and is a person resigned to a destiny of that or is it like you just mentioned I, I'm thinking it's more along the lines of no it's something to 
deal with and overcome to reach that higher self. I don't know. Yes. You tell us. What, what do you think? Yes. So this is where I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I get in trouble. But I will be forthright. Um, so you're, again, you're, you're speaking to someone who is still developing my spiritual principles and, and understanding because I was never a spiritual person at all until this accident kind of cracked me open to a little bit more of a um, sensitivity and understanding of the world. And that's a whole other story for a whole other mm -hmm. time. Um, but that being said, um, I also do what's called past life regression. So a lot of my healing of disease, for better or for worse, comes from this kind of karmic healing, past life stuff. And that's the more esoteric stuff. But even without going into that, um, I do believe in destiny. I do believe that even, again, no matter, it's very difficult to say that someone can be born, let's say like a baby is born in order to die. And how can that be, how can I say that with clear conscience of um, it's their destiny? But I'll tell you what, and this is another kind of personal anecdote, which I don't share much. Um, I, when I was a baby, my mom had a baby. I had a younger sister who died when she was born. A catalyst for the rest of my family's history um, came from that incident. I would say, and talk about like, you know, earlier memories, seeds of trauma and stuff like that. As an adult, I never thought about that. But actually, that seed of my baby sister dying um, basically a month after she was born. My mom went into full-on depression, hysteria. I was three years old. That was one of the major seeds that 20 years down the line, 18 years down the line, however long down the line, was one of the seeds for my chronic illness. That big emotional upset. So can I tell you, and I don't, again, I'm, I'm still um, being honest and mm -hmm playing around with my spiritual beliefs and stuff like that, but I, I do believe um, my sister came in for a reason, spiritually speaking, um, and I see that very clearly now, that she was a catalyst for, even in my own life, the, the compassion I have for people and the depth of work I can do with people um, was due to that thing that happened when I was three. So her karmic path, intervened with my families, which intervened with a lot of people's families now. Um, mm -hmm. And I say that with a little bit of a seed of pain, saying, I don't want to put across the message that I don't believe that, you know, when kids are ill and stuff like that, that it's not painful, it is. But there is a belief in me, yes, I would have to say that for whatever reason, it's a higher path. And, um, yeah, I would say it's, it's um, I would go there. Yeah. Hmm. There's, there's purpose, there's reason, there's overcoming. You see, you know, what yeah. domino effects um, that yeah. now, because of everything that you went through, that now yeah. you are in a place to help other people. That's something I personally believe is um, with a very firm Christian belief um, yeah. that, that God loves all his children, that he doesn't want us to feel pain. It's, and yes. it's not to say these things aren't painful, but I believe he can help us when we use tools like you're describing here to become our more empowered selves. I believe he helps us yes. in that journey to overcome and that he makes miracles of messes. And there that's, I, I'm so glad, like you just, you say all this, it connects a lot of pieces and I'm hoping our listeners are really thinking and, you know, we each get to perceive things in our own way and are through our, the, the lens of our lives and our own trials and difficulties. But I think there's a lot of beauty in all that you've shared today that there, there's hope, there's yes. perspective, there's resolutions to be achieved and, and certainly never give up on seeking those out. So, Dana, just thank you. This is so beautiful. Tell us where we can learn more about you, get in touch with you. And do you do any online work or do people need to travel to you? I do. Um, about a third of my clientele now is um, virtual all over the world. 
Um, mm. And it's basically the same as if you're in my office because when you're in my office, your eyes are closed anyway. There are people do, that do fly in to see me because they want more intensive treatment. So I'll see them for like about two weeks straight and then they kind of go back home. Otherwise, um, I see people, you know, um, online. I do. And um, like we were speaking about earlier, there's been a lot of requests lately um, to work with me, and I can't fulfill all the demand. So I'm starting to restructure a little bit and offer group hypnotic work um, for both chronic illness and weight loss. Um, that's being uh, built in the moment, and um, so it can, I can so provide exciting. a little bit of a platform for people to kind of sign in and, and, and have that as an option. So that's kind of how yes. it's going. Yes, so they can reach out to you if they're interested in that, right? Yes. And is that email or, or your website? Yes. Give us uh, both of those. Yes, so my website's my name. Um, it's www.danapeicher.com, which I know is a bit of a difficult name. So it's Dana, D-A-N-N-A, Peicher, P-Y-C-H-E-R.com. And... Um, my email is BTT, B as in boy, T as in Tom, T as in Tom, coaching at gmail.com. And uh, typically when you reach out to, reach out to me, um, you know, you'll be in touch with my assistant and she can either set you up with an appointment or, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, I think this is, this is perfect. I'm going to put the uh, email and URL in the show notes for all our listeners, whether they're listening in iTunes or Stitcher Radio, just click on show notes and you'll find the link there. Uh, one last piece of advice, Dana, and then we'll say goodbye. Beautiful. One last piece of advice is um, to never give up hope and to never take no for an answer. It took me, uh, it was quite a journey for my healing, um, but I was very stubborn about the fact that um, this was not going to be the rest of my life. So that stubbornness was actually uh, a blessing. So my, my biggest thing I always say to people is that keep exploring, keep getting out there, and um, never take no for an answer. Amazing. Well, thank you for your time and the work you do and the shift you made from, uh, like you said, just doing a, a, your broadcasting job to now doing what you have this passion for and doing so much good in this world. So thank you so much and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. You can learn more about Body Buddies and Power Foods Lifestyle by going to www.body-buddies.com, B-O-D-Y-B-U-D-D-I-E-S.com, and PowerFoodsLifestyle.com. That's www.p-o-w-e-r-f-o-o-d-s-lifestyle.com. Information in this episode is provided for informational purposes and is not meant to substitute the advice provided by your own physician or other medical professional. Information and statements regarding dietary supplements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.